We are just waiting for it. And there we go. So funny that when I say it, it just happens. It's kind of like I'm willing it. Anyways, good morning, everyone. It's Thursday and there is tons trending because that goes such in line with Trending Thursday. I am Carol Sue, a.k.a. Naughty Boss, live in my home office this morning with two... This does. And good morning, everyone. My name is Janice, a.k.a. Wellness Diva 5.0 with some lovely, lovely flowers from my son for Mother's Day. Oh, those are beautiful. Um, wanted to show them off. Uh, they're absolutely beautiful. My favorite colors and they smell beautiful. So thank you to my little sunshine, who's not so little anymore, Ryan yeah. Scott. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, and before we get started, I want to give a happy shout out birthday to my friend, Laura. Uh, she is an uh, amazing woman that I've met, that John and I actually John met her first playing pickleball. And her and her wife, Melanie, have become very uh, dear to our hearts. And we uh, had a pre-celebration birthday party. And it was supposed to continue on all this week with different events. And sadly, uh, she's got a personal uh, matter with her family that she has to tend to this week. So I know she's a little disappointed in the derailment of all these festivities, but I got a feeling we're just going to postpone them. But I hope she's having a great birthday and thoughts are, are with her with what she's dealing with. So I just wanted to do that and hope she has a good day. What's trending? Well... <laughs> Funny and not so funny. I mean, there there are so many, and I, I hate to use the word crisis because we know how that was overplayed, you know, with, with President Trump. And now they're using the word again. But the funny thing is it has a different ring and feel to it because we actually are in crisis mode. The crisis that they were manufacturing were manufactured crisis um, to, I always say when, someone really pushes an agenda hard and this can go in fitness this can go in corporations this can go in your daily life this can be going on in your own town when somebody pushes something an agenda whatever the agenda may be so hard where you scratch your head and you say i don't really see it that way it makes you wonder is it about deflection from something else going on right so a lot of times when we heard that word crises uh, and crisis, crisis, we're in a, you know, constitutional crisis, we're in, the, you know, this crisis, that crisis, nothing ever panned out from those crises. Just want to remind everyone. But now, you know, and I believe he's been in, uh, in the office, the person occupying the office of the White House, 113 days. And I, cannot believe it's almost like you know how you know you have, you have those sayings it's kind of like a question how to how to tour your country in 30 days or how to uh reshape your body in 60 days how to flatten your abs in 20 days and what kept bringing in my head is how to destroy a country in 100 days because there's just so many, so many things. And I'm not going to talk about all of them because that would be a lo really long talk in a lot of conversation, obviously. But the one that I'm going to focus on, because there are so many, uh, is the gas shortage. So I want to remind people, especially Floridians, uh, there's no need to buy a lot of gasoline. The only shortage we are experiencing in a lot of states is because of panic buying, kind of like the toilet paper and the Lysol wipes, okay? Um, the pipeline was, you know, we, they've already admitted it was hacked. I don't believe this current administration came out in front of it. They're always like a dollar day, a dollar late, do, whatever that saying is, dollar late, dollar short, whatever, how it goes. They're always like behind. They're always you know, behind the eight ball. But the pipeline hack line does not affect uh, the area of Florida that I particularly live in, which is more is more south. Um, but I've seen a lot of people, yesterday I drove, I had to go get my car serviced and I drove by a lot of gas stations and 
I couldn't believe, number one, that people were now hoarding gasoline, but the containers they were using. And I want to make sure, because this is actually a safety announcement that should be trending, and that's what I hope people understand. There is a law about what type of container you use. Uh, it's uh, five, uh, five gallon buckets, but they have to be an approved container. So you see the, the normal ones that you would maybe fill up for extra gas, maybe for your lawnmower. Um, you might notice landscapers have bigger vats, but they're all legally approved. Um, it is not safe or legal to transport gasoline in a container that is not approved. How many people do you know that out there? I mean, I've always known that. I just thought it was, again, common sense. That's the other piece to what we're going to be chatting about. Uh, I've witnessed, I've seen pictures, but I've also witnessed people putting them in, you know, the tubs that you can buy at Wally World for maybe $9. Uh, yeah, like a Rubbermaid. A yeah, rubber I saw that. I was like. They're pouring that, that, that is, first of all, the gasoline is probably going to eat through the rubber, drip in your car. Like you're, you're talking about your car can blow up. Okay, people. Uh, there's a reason why there's a legal container for the fume aspect of it for what gas can do it's an ignite it can ignite things so you have to have a special container people now why people thought a rubbermaid container was an approved transport for gasoline i don't know i i, I can't even it's common sense, but is it? I mean, do we have that many students in our country that don't grasp that and don't know that? And these were adults. These weren't children. You know, these weren't teenagers. These were adults that were loading it. Uh, I also saw them going in um, what looks to appear to, to, to appear to be, at least with the Rubbermaid, there's a top. Still not going to do it. It's still illegal still not safe, not recommended. It's against the law. I saw somebody with a, what appeared to be a tall laundry basket. And I'm thinking a laundry basket typically doesn't have a cover. Um, wake up America. Don't be that stupid because you're looking pretty like a student right now that you don't know this basic information. Um, there are warnings on get the approved gasoline takes explaining that the proper way to cap it. This is no joke. You know, we're going to the, the crisis that is going to occur besides the the over the panic buying of gasoline is someone's going to get hurt. You know, and I would hate to think that it was a stew with children in the car. I mean, I hate to, I hate to see anybody in the car. But some student with children in the car going and buy gasoline, hoarding it and putting it in a Rubbermaid or whatever unapproved way to transport it. But it is illegal. Uh, the other thing is barrels. A lot of people say, oh my God, these people with barrels. Well, I don't want to go automatically and judge them because they could be landscapers. There are a lot of the uh, landscapers have a, a bigger approved barrel type transport. And because that has to do with, excuse me, their business. I'm gonna fix my back there. So I didn't want to, you know, but the point being, especially in the area of uh, Southern Foot, we do not have a crisis, people. We do not have a gasoline shortage. So, uh, and I ha and I have to say that our gas prices have pretty remained copacetic, other than obviously them go been going up since this new administration but it's, it's been maintaining about 275 a gallon. Now I understand the average uh, across the United States is $3 or more. Mm -hmm. So I hope independence and, you know, just, you know, whatever are not gouging people because that's so wrong. I did see some pictures with over $4. Uh, diesel seemed to be the hot topic because no matter where you went, there was a, you know, the old fashioned plastic bag over, which I'm not even sure if that's really safe because there are fumes, but I don't know, maybe, maybe they're approved plastic bags. I don't know. So that was one thing. The other thing is just common sense. You know, we, 
we tend to, you know, and a lot of experts were actually talking, how do you overcome people panic buying? Because, you know, it's not going to end with gasoline. The next thing will be food. The next thing will be, I guess, from what I understand, chickens, chickens are, uh, you know, buy your chicken. Apparently that's the next thing that's, you know, people are buying up. And it's, it's panic buying. Uh, in one way, I think it's good for the economy. It stimulates, but uh, the other p- the piece speaking about the economy is the crisis of where we are, where government, you know, whoever thought that we would, we would be in a world where our government wants us to stay home and just keep collecting money and do nothing. That is socialism. Now, I've often referred to that as I think we've kind of circumvented over socialism, gone right to communism with the whole mass thing. And speaking of the mass thing, that's the last thing I'm going to mention is for those that are still wearing outdoors, the CDC has admitted they inadvertently do not have their calculations correct. It is actually less than 1%. And the only reason why that you could actually even catch the virus and Remember, it has over a 98% recovery rate. So I happened to um, getting my car serviced yesterday. And a woman, you have to wait outside and they, you know, check you in or whatever. And then you go see your perspective or respective uh, representative that's going to service your car or take your paperwork and your, your ID and all that information. And a woman was driving up alone and she had a mask on in her car alone. And then she gets out of the car, which we are outside with this and kept the mask on. And I, I just looked at her. I was like, no words. <laughs> that's, not, I, that's all I can come out with. No words. Because I thought, you know, common sense people, you're driving in your vehicle on your own. What she should actually be doing is tearing the freaking mask off. Open your windows down. You're in Florida. Let some of that air in. I know yesterday was a little warm, but let some fresh air in. Air out the car if you're if you're if you're nervous in your own car. (laughs) Maybe you should just stay in your brick home. What do you think about them apples? Well, turn it over to me. And wow, I have so much I could say. I'd be on here for hours. What I will say about um, the mask thing. I don't know if I mentioned this before. Um, When I was at a local grocery store, I had that issue. And I think I did talk about it the other day. You did. And we talked about the fear that that man probably felt. So while I'm chatting about that woman, no words can come out except for the word fear. It's, It's sad. I mean, I joke about it, but in retrospect, it's pretty sad. It's very sad. And um, Gary surprised me last night. We ended up going out just for a quick bite to eat, which was nice. And as we're walking out of the um, establishment, well, even before I was walking out, like right, you know, they have the door in between the restaurant and then the outer door. So I'm in between and I just like, oh my God, you know, tear the thing off because I hate the mask. And a woman was um, also walking out Um, She was parked next to us. She was still wearing her mask outside. And I felt the same thing. Like, oh my gosh, she's, she's by herself or, um, or appeared, I should say, to be by herself. Um, (laughs) And she still had the mask on outside and she got into her car and drove off by herself with the mask on. And I said to Gary, you know, as much as that guy the other day annoyed the heck out of me and I, in a respectful manner, let him know that he annoyed the heck out of me. Um, I almost wanted to, not that I would have, and I, I honestly, I would not have, but I almost wanted to say to this person, Hey, why are you wearing your mask? I know. Like turn, turn it around, but you know, I don't want to do that. No, because, you know, the, the point being, I mean, we joke about it because it's common sense again that, you know, we realize now as more information has come out, um, Fauci is very questionable. 
Uh, the other scary piece to what's been trending is his, um, his that he was requested to speak before Congress. And they're questioning him because they're trying to get to the bottom, or maybe it might have been the Senate. I can't remember which. So it's either the Senate or the Congress. And they were questioning his particular donations of this company that has ties to the Wuhan lab, which was actually money, um, I believe that came, somehow it had to do with American ties, America money that he was involved with that ended up in this particular lab. Now, technically he was correct in the way that he worded it, but it's the way that he worded it to skirt around the issue. Uh, he was very snarky. He was very uh, rude. You know, to me, regardless of who's in power, if you've been summoned to, you know, Congress or the Senate, you know, you do that with, with courtesy and respect. And I think he's, he's one of those, I always said he's got like, I, I don't believe he's very tall. I really don't know his height, but he appears to be a very petite man. And uh, frequently a lot of petite men have kind of that Napoleon syndrome and they want their voice to carry for, in their mind, lack of their physical appearance, which I think is stupid because, you know, God made us all shapes and sizes for a reason. It doesn't matter. It does not impede who you are as a person, but for some people it does. And I think he's one of them. So he, he was just very rude, very snarky, and he skirted. So there were some experts kind of reviewing his testimony. And they said, I think it was Ron Paul. Ron Paul was, so that it would have been the Senate. Ron Paul was questioning him. And if he had worded the question differently, you know, I would have been interested to see how Fauci responded. And it had to do with the way that Fauci tw twisted the question back. So technically he was correct, but if it was, actually asked in a different way, you would have found out. Um, so a lot of people, you know, tore apart his testimony to say he's a liar. Like there were congressmen and senators blatantly coming out and saying he's a liar. He's lying to the American people and we want answers. And I thought, wow. So think about that. I want our listeners and viewers to think about that. If that proves to be true, that he funneled funds through whatever means to donate to the lab that is connected or because the, the lab that I guess that the funds were going to were in, you know, feet away, like hundreds of or yards, hundreds of yards away from the lab that also works with that lab in Wuhan. What are the chances of that? You know, when you think of all the laboratories, not in the United States, in the world. So, and the whole route, route of this testimony is to get to the reason and the origin of the virus. They want to know how it occurred um, because it certainly didn't come from bats. So if you already have some integrity issues with this man, and this is the representative that's preaching about, you know, two, three, and four masks now, when you know he chooses to wear them whatever he chooses to common sense should take over but sadly the problem with that is certain people that are living in that fear that have to wear the mask and i call it the political mask now because it is it's it's politics for most but for many it's truly out of fear because that's all they've heard for over a year they truly believe this man who is, I believe, in my opinion, uh, is not quite telling the truth. I'm not gonna come out and say that he's a liar because I don't know, but there are too many times, I think most people can agree, and there's many of uh, video reels of him flip-flopping left and right. So I question his integrity, but imagine that that's the only person that you've been listening to for over a year. So they, I, I think those that wear a mask alone in the car, while we find it comical, 
uh, are truly in fear. And I fear does a does such a number on your health and wellness. It takes over your mindset. It takes over how you feel when you eat. It can impede uh, your ambitions, your energy. Uh, a lot of times people that are living in fear are fatigued, they're exhausted. You might find them very short, very curt with you because they're not sleeping well. That's what fear does to you. Fear is one of those things that impacts your whole well-being. And for me, that is very sad. And we try to uh, enlighten our listeners and our viewers the dangers of fear. And one of the things that you can do to alleviate that fear is to get information from other sources. Talk to people, even people that oppose your views, and just listen to them. It doesn't have to be a controversy. Just tell me, I know you're not in fear. You don't wear a mask. Why don't you wear a mask? Explain it to me so I can understand. I don't want to live in this fear, but this is all I know. This is all I've heard. This is all that's been beating in my brain for over a year. Don't you think, Jan? Well, yeah, you know, think of the real meaning behind fear that is based in a foundation sometimes, okay? And I say sometimes rooted in a narrative to construct another narrative. Yes. It, it's like that ball of, um, like think of the ball of um, rubber bands. Okay, they all go different ways, but yet they make a perfect ball. So those have been molded to fit into a narrative that looks like a ball. You, it, you reference a ball. So think of that, think of fear as a ball that's rolling down the line or think of um, a snowball that you roll down a hill in the winter time. It gets bigger and bigger. So the narrative is getting bigger and bigger because it has to cover different things. I wanna go back to um, Fauci for a moment. Um, I'm calling a COI, which is conflict of interest. And that's all I'm gonna say about, about Fauci. Um, Cause I really, I, when this pandemic, China virus, whatever anybody wants to call it, hit the United States and March 13th, I will forever remember that. The three of us, uh, myself, yeah. Poppy and Gary, watching in horror like what is going on. And we had such respect at that time for Fauci. Now I have zero respect for this person. Um, when you're constantly changing the narrative and while nobody was prepared for this, I don't think anybody could have even remotely prepared for this. But then it goes back to, okay, we were hit with it so hard, so swiftly, so quickly, but look at the states. And this is definitely Democratic and Republican. So I just want to put that out there. Everybody knows I'm a very conservative Republican. Look at, um, dare I say, Killer Cuomo from the state of New York. Look at Governor DeSantis from the state of Florida. Hello. It's Hi. same pandemic. Um, while I believe population Florida is higher, uh, we have a very high senior citizen age group. We, uh, you know, the the, the difference that one of the huge differences from a weather standpoint is obviously you know we have more sun it's it's warmer here than new york and that was you know that that was a blessing because we know the value that sunshine and heat and vitamin d uh really add to your overall health and wellness you know whether it's the virus whether it's a cold whether it's a flu whatever it may be but i do say you have something on that you know the, the comparison and what did you, I mean, obviously, because you're in Connecticut, so you're closer to New York, which some of, I think, his rhetoric poured into Connecticut to a certain standpoint. And I think comparable, your numbers were still better than New York. 
I, I believe so. And, you know, Governor Lamont, yes, he is a Democrat, um, state of Connecticut. Um, overall, I think did, under the circumstances, did a really good job on keeping the state informed about, you know, listening to the science, not creating a narrative like some people did. That can be a whole nother topic. It can, it, can. It, 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 it so can, and, and it really goes to show you that what, you know, and it, I guess it leads to another question, don't you think? What was the reason? Why? Well, I know why, but I'm not going to blurt it out and say it because <laughs> that could start a whole nother topic. And then you would get me talking fast and then I wouldn't stop. See? <laughs> But you know that you know we are in a we are in a crisis situation. There's no doubt about it. You look what's going on with Israel. You look, you know, the other extremely sadness, the extreme sadness of these babies, you know, Texas border, you know, that are just the borders, the borders are a hell, people. You know, they actually did the numbers, and they're talking about five thousand immigrants illegal immigrants every week. That's the number. That's a crisis. Uh, having a farmer in Texas find four, uh, five children, one youngest being 11 months old, crawling around in over 94 degree heat. That's a crisis. Not dealing with what is going on in a world when you know in our United States that there is, I believe they want, I want to say there are nine million, uh, eight million people out of work or eight million jobs available, but nine people, nine million out of work. Get your lazy ass off the couch and go work. Now, a lot of them are saying, well, I don't want to work for $8.53. I don't want to work for $9.52. I don't want to work for $10.29. Do I agree that they sh uh, some states really need to address the issue of minimum wage? Absolutely, because it's certainly not keeping up with inflation. If you don't think we're inflation right now, do you see what's going on in our construction? Do you see what's going on in Wall Street? Do you see what's going on with small mom and pop stores that had to shut down initially because of the virus and now have to shut down because they can't get anybody in there to work? That's what a crisis is. And how dare this current administration literally putting our country in multiple crises, and I hold them personally responsible. We are day, I believe it's 113. 13, some people say is unlucky, some people say it's lucky. Let's hope it's lucky and that he gets out of eating his chocolate chip cookies and going to warm milk and going to bed by eight o'clock. Where are the days when you knew the president was working till midnight? Where were the days that, you know, finally, finally, we started seeing a thriving economy, people getting back to work, people uniting. Where are those days? Right. Like, and when we get back to them. I'm not sure with this, this particular, I, and I, and I think, you know, I go back to, what President Trump said, a lot of times you have to like bleed and you got to bleed hard for people to wake up and see. And I think that's kind of where we are now. We are bleeding. This country is bleeding. There are so many crises. And yet, where is leadership? They are nowhere to be found. Where is leadership and what the hell are they doing and why the hell? Oh, sorry. Why the heck? Is specifically to the border crisis, why the heck are they every day blaming the Trump administration? I don't get it. I don't oh, I get, get it. it. I, I get it because they got nothing. What, what, what more can they say or do? They like, get, get the your... Really, you know what I really think is going on? I really think they don't really give a rat's ass. I really don't. Yeah, and Kamala Harris... If you should ever hear this, get your lazy vice presidential fake ass down there and do something. Boom. I said it. It's true. But, but I, and, I, and, I, and I think I think the, the problem being is it snowballing. You know, you can snowball good feelings with kindness and 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 pay that forward and you know want to talk about hope and change. 
there's a there's another point where you can do all those things but if you're not taking the action so what i'm telling people right now there are a lot of people on social media that are giving great updates and it's good to be updated uh also i heard uh, waiting for the link is that they did find actually over 500,000 votes so far in Arizona that were flipped from uh, Trump to Biden, 500,000 votes. Uh, and that's that's getting heated up. However, what I will say to this is it is OK to keep people informed on social media because a lot of people uh, are too lazy to investigate themselves. It's not enough. You look at your state and you find out who your local representatives are, who your senator is, who you have stock in what company. And if they are not doing the bid and the good works for we the people, don't just lambaste them on so social media. Like Just like even with this podcast, this is not enough. I have a whole list of uh, senators, representatives and corporations that I intend to actually email. That's what's going to make the change. Because we are like, so many people wonder what is one, I'm only one person, what can I do? Yeah, vent on social media, but it's not enough that they're not looking at your social media, but guess what? They do respond to your emails. They do pay attention to that, even though email for a lot of people is passe. They do respond. So if you have a representative that you feel is not doing we the people, email them. If you have a senator that is not representing your agenda and what you want for we the American people in our constitution in America, email them. If you have stock in corporations that are too busy getting involved with politics and interfering, as a stockholder, email them. You wanna make change? Do something. We're not in control of what goes on, but we're in control of our actions and we're in control of our reactions. And if we're not taking part and being part of the, pro uh, the solution and sitting around and yipping about it, guess what? You're part of the problem. Be a part of the solution. Yeah. Boom. Like a ba -ba boom. Yeah, we have fun. We get, we get psyched up. We get excited because these are things that we know that you're passionate about. And obviously we're passionate about. And that's what's trending. There's a lot of things trending, but instead of just scrolling and looking at the trends, start, e start taking action because we don't have to live in a world of fear. We don't have to be in crisis mode. When you use that energy, use that fear energy, use that crisis energy and start taking action because then you're going to feel good about it. You're going to say, you know what? I did my part. I did something. And then guess what? You don't hear back from them. Email them again. And make sure you're letting everyone in your community, in your surrounding, in your circle to do the same. And guess what? When they start getting over in it, phone calls, that's another one. Pick up the phone. How many people? You're on your phone anyways. Half the time you're picking up spam. Why don't you be the, the other side of that and start calling senators? No, you're not spamming them, but I'm saying I don't. I don't. You know what? I elected you. What are you doing for me? I don't like the agenda. I don't like your stance on this. I think we should be doing. And then get specific. Don't just blankly say, "Well, I don't like what you're doing." You gotta let them know what you don't like what they're doing. If they're interfering with things in your government, or they're not taking action and making things better, if they're not pushing the agenda of addressing the border. If they're not, I mean, I love the fact that our governor, and, and includes your local governor too, your local uh, representative, not just the ones that are in Washington, your local reps that are here, your state reps that are here, if they're not doing what you want, email them and call them. Because then you will feel like you're being productive in some sense. Even if it's a small, small thing, imagine, like we talk about Wealth Wellness Wednesday, imagine everyone picking up the phone. Imagine everyone emailing their constituents. You will, because they are, they want to know, because guess what? They're not stupid. They use common sense. They say, hey, my constituents, my voters, my state is not happy with me right now. And if I want to be reelected, I've got to do the will of the people. 
And they can't do the will of the people if we're sitting back and just shouting it out on social media. We have to take action ourselves. We have to be a part of the solution. And that's what should be trending. Be a part of the solution today. Absolutely. Be a part of that solution. Make a change. Make it right. Boom shakalaka. All right. On that note, Trending Thursday, we covered a lot of great subjects. And we're excited for next week. We're excited for tomorrow, Fantabulous Friday. And we hope that you are part of the solution. As always, we'd love and appreciate your feedback, your comments, your sh suggestions. Let us know what you think about today's podcast. We'd love to hear from you. On that note, my name is Janice, aka Wellness Diva 5.0, and I am with two. Sisters, and this is Carol Sue, aka Naughty Boss, live from Vero Beach, ready to get my pickleball on. Again, trending Thursday, be part of the solution, not the problem. And guess what? When we do that, we do that all together. Boy, we can make change. We can take that crisis and go poof just by our word and our own actions. You guys have a great day. We will see you tomorrow for Fantabulous Friday. Have a great day, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>